Well, here we are with two of the brightest gentlemen uh, on the face of the earth. Where did they go? Well, I guess you guys will have to do. Here we are at Midnight Science Club in Faraday Studios, and I'm Jake Wizard Four, and I have two wits with me. And this one is Beckett, and this one is Elliot. So we're going to do some activities with pipe hands. I know this sounds exciting, and people just can you hear them just falling out of their chairs with excitement? They're saying, "Man, we're going to do the science with a pipe hand." And believe it or not, with this simple little device, we're going to study three scientific principles. And you're going to learn something with a pipe hand. And one of those is centrifugal force. Another one is gravity, acceleration of gravity. And the third thing we're going to study is lightning. We're going to use pipe hand to learn something about lightning, which is going to really be cool. Let's start out with centrifugal force. This is a kind of a big pipe hand, I guess. Yeah. That's a big one. One for you. One for me. And I hold up the camera. Nice ball bearing. Why don't you put one in the pan? Uh, oh, now he's going. That's pretty cool. So if you were going to describe the motion of that ball, how would you describe it? Circular. If we could cut a hole here in the side of the pan, what do you think the ball would do? It depends how big it was. If it's a small hole, it would probably keep going. Which way is that ball trying to go? Out. Think it's trying to go out? Because it's right up against the edge. It's right up against the edge. Did you hear that? What do you think? Is that ball trying to go in a circle or is it trying to go out? I agree with Elliot. I think it's trying to go out. So how could we demonstrate that it, what it's trying to do? Well, let's just see. I have something down here. Check it out. And we get this going. Which way is this ball going to go? I think it's going to go straight because like out like that. It's nothing that's keeping it in the pipe pen. But what, if I go this way fast enough, wouldn't it keep on going around? I don't think so, but it may be. We'll put a piece of tape down on the path you think that ball's gonna take. That way. That's like that? Mm-hmm. It's straight on out that way? Yes. I don't know, because you think if it's going, it'd keep on going that way. You guys wanna test it to see how, how, how close you are? Here we go, I'll hold, I'll hold this so it doesn't move. Oh my gosh. Did it go right down the tape? Yeah. Yep. Here we go, let's try again, ready? Here it comes. Right around the corner, and there it is. Right, oh geez. So what does that say about when something is moving in a circular path like this? At any point, what's it trying to do? Go straight. That's a good little demonstration, isn't it? Yeah. It is kind of thing. Let's move on to something else. Let's move on to, to some gravity. We're gonna have to get some help. Is Chessie, are you around? We're gonna have you help us. So, Bethet, uh, Bethet, is your name Bethet? My aunt's name is Beth. Okay. My name's Beckett. Yeah, I know. I said Bethet. Sometimes I get confused. That's what happens when you're an old wizard. You forget names. So, Beckett and Elliot, check out what's over there on the floor. What do you see? A really big pie pan. Another pie pan. And a pie pan over there, and suspended above that. What you see? What's swinging above it? What is that? Metal nuts, hardware nuts, and you follow that string all the way up. And there they are. Hello. Hi. Up there, who is that? Hello. I can't see past the lights. What is that? Is that Ethan? Yes, it's Ethan and Chessie. Ethan Chessie. and Chessie. Hi. Yeah. They're holding the nuts. I guess it's the nuts holding the nuts or something like that. Yeah. Hey. Like that. Yeah, it's like that. So this is supposed to be a gravity demonstration. Now you just think for a second, grab your beard and look at that and go, hmm. What would the old wizard want to demonstrate? Well, I assume we're going to drop the nuts. Going to drop the nuts. The, the metal ones. Not the metal the, nuts, yeah. Not the other ones. The other nuts, okay. Nuts on the pie pan. Look at the nuts. What do you notice? Anything about the nuts? How they're tied on there? Or they're evenly, evenly spaced. spaced. Evenly spaced nuts. So they should hit the pie pan at the at even times, like bong, even. bong, ah. bong, bong. Oh, they should, yeah, they're evenly spaced, they should hit it. Becca, you go over there and kind of get it positioned over the pan. So you do a countdown. 1,990, just kidding. Okay. Three, two, one, drop. That was not as loud as I thought it was gonna be. Was it was supposed to be equal? Yeah. So tell me, what did I just hear? Even though the nuts were evenly placed, yes. they sped up, like the sound sped up. Instead of being like thunk, 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 yeah. it was thunk, 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 thunk. I gotta hear that again. Three, two, one, drop. Oh, it did go faster. This is not right. Excuse me. What happened with your, hey, Becca, did you hear that? Yeah, I did, it got a lot faster. It got a lot faster, didn't it? 
So what changed? The, the speed of the nut falling or the gravity? Did the gravity change? The speed of the nut falling. The speed of the nut falling. So gravity was a constant pull, and it just kept pulling, 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 and that's what made it speed up. What do they call that when something's going at a certain speed and it keeps going faster, faster? There's a name for that. Acceleration. Yeah, we just heard acceleration, didn't we? Suppose I wanted to hear those nuts go equally spaced. I want to hear that noise equally spaced. We'd have to space them differently. So you're suggesting if we change the space, as those things got going faster, they'd go, go farther, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, okay, if these drop. If we dropped them, then what would we hear? If it worked, if then it, worked. it would be regular. Yeah, I think we ought to try that. So are you ready to do a countdown on this one? Yep. Go for it. Three, two, one, drop. They were equal, weren't they? Uh-huh. Went kind of fast, but they definitely were equal. That was sweet. Should we try that one more time? Yeah. Okay, I'm listening. You do a countdown. Three, two, one, drop. They were regular. Well, so much for gravity and pie pants. Let's do some lightning. I'm ready to do some lightning. Have you met Godwin, by the way? I think I have, yeah. He's you met Godwin. Here. This is Godwin, yeah. Hi, this Godwin. is Godwin. Hello. Yeah, this is Beckett. We're going to build a, a little miniature lightning generator. It's called an electrophorus. These were made two or three hundred years ago when people were first studying electricity, static electricity and current electricity, mostly static electricity. So here's what we're going to do. Coffee cups, right? A plate. Styrofoam. Yeah. Styrofoam oh, plate. Yeah, another pie pan. Mm -hmm. And a screwdriver. Oh, look closely. Oh, that's a little pokey thing. Yeah. Pokey, it's called an awl. Oh. It's a tool. It's a pointed tool, a sharp tool. And I've got some straws and some scissors and some foil. foil. And uh, fur something. Some fur. Fur, yeah. Fur, yeah. Fur. Slow rabbit. And oh, what's that? That's a hot glue gun. Would this be a, a good conductor of electricity or a poor conductor? Poor. Yeah, it's a poor. Poor, right? You're yeah. a physics major, right? Yeah. That's cool. So yeah, you know these things. So what do you call a poor conductor? Insulator? Let's see. College man. And here's a pie pan, similar in shape. Good conductor or bad conductor? Good. That's a good conductor. That's good, good metal. It's a good conductor. So we've got something that will conduct electricity and something that won't do it very easily. This was a story that was told to me once. You know, in, in London, where Faraday was uh, working at the Royal Institution, there was a big cathedral there, St. Paul's Cathedral. It's huge. If you went inside the dome, if that dome was an atom, can you picture that? If you went to the center of that dome and had a peanut in your hand, that would be the nucleus of an atom. That's how small the nucleus is. And an electron would be a speck of dust way out at the edge of the dome going around that peanut. So what we're gonna try to do is to put a pile of electrons on this plate. They say, now what are we gonna do with them? Eat them. They're on there, I can't see them. We're gonna use this pie pan to pick up some electrons, some charged particles that we deposit on here. And we're going to uh, bring this pan down and pick up some of them. They'll be attracted to this. But as soon as they get on there, since this is a good conductor, they're gonna run, they're gonna highball it. And they'll run towards my hand because I've, I've got a lot of water in my hand, I kind of conduct. I've got to figure out a way to hold on to this pan without touching it with my hands. Do you see anything on the table that might be non-conductive? Maybe this? Yeah. Yeah. So if I could figure out a way to put one of these onto here, I could have a handle. And to make it a little more difficult, I'm gonna have you Guys, take this all, and poke a hole in the side of this cup so I can stick a straw through there. Because I want to hang a thread down here and take a little piece of straw and tie it on a thread and have it hang right there. That's going to be our indicator. We're going to make a little indicator. Oh, by the way, how do you put the static on there? You take the fur and just stroke it on top of the plate. That's how you get the charge on there. What's happening is that fur has some loosely bound electrons and, and other particles, charged particles, and we're just tearing them off. Now, if I bring that here just closely, some of that charge is yeah, some of that charge is moving up to the plate, right? We felt a spark because we put a static charge on here, yeah. and it was staying there yeah. for, for a time being. That static charge was able to flow through the pan. He brought his finger over, and that charge jumped to his finger. So I don't know if this is going to work. We got that hanging there, right? It is insulated. As soon as they connect, they'll have the same charge. And what will like charges do? They will repel. Repel. And that's the way we're going to celebrate Pi Day. Pi Day. Pi Day. Pi if day. you can get that thing to vibrate that way. And if you can't, we'll just keep trying. All right. I should repel it. 
It's like ping pong. Oh, it is, isn't it? You have such a magnetic personality. Thank you. Wow, that's amazing. You can move electrons back and forth. Who would have thought you could do that? We did it on Pi Day. We moved electrons hither and yon here at Faraday Studios. And if they want to see some more of this, what would they do? They would go to Patreon. Patreon, what else? Or Facebook, Facebook. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Yeah, that's, no, that's all he said. That's good, I what he see. said. Ditto. Okay, sounds good, man.